Welcome back to Mesot, Thailand. It is Tuesday, November 3rd, two o'clock in the afternoon, and that makes it lunchtime. I haven't eaten in this restaurant before, which is kind of a surprise because it's right around the corner from my guest house. And I'm sure I walked by it a couple of dozen times and I never noticed it, which is kind of odd. I only learned about it because a YouTuber, a cyclist named Joel, Joel Brunner, I think is his name. He was here in Mesod recently and he shot a few videos uh, exploring some of the small restaurants and market places here in Mesot. And I should say that if you want to learn all about the food at this restaurant, what is best to order, how to order, how it tastes, and lots of really useful information like that, then go watch Joel's video because he is the food expert here. If you want to see someone fumble around, have no idea what to order, or how to pay, or how to eat the food, or even describe how it tastes, then stick with me. Then uh, <laughs> this is the video for you. With my typical concerns, you might even call them obsessions, the thing that jumped out at me about Joel's video was the ordering system at this restaurant. I don't know if they do this every day, but when Joel went there, they had big laminated picture cards sitting on a table. And he could look over this whole array of pictures of the various dishes, and then uh, he could just select them and like pick up these cards and say, oh, I would like this and this and this. He collected four of these cards and handed them to the uh, server at the restaurant and those were the dishes that they brought to his table. So it was almost like a deck of, a big uh, deck of cards serving as the menu. And it was a very simple uh, way to order. And <laughs> I'm all about simple ways to order. That's my whole life. It's my life goal. Find places where it's uh, simple to order and simple to eat. And the restaurant is just up ahead on the left. And I'm not getting a good vibe looking at it from here. Is it even open? Oh, yeah, I think it is open. I was looking at the building at the beginning here, but this isn't it. This is the sign, Bismillah, Indian and Thai restaurant. But that's it over there, the, uh, the, uh, the yellow, uh, yellow columns there. And it looks like the door is open. So I was thinking with my luck, I happen to come here on the day that they're closed, but they might be open. I was just expecting to see someone out here cooking roti in the, uh, the uh, oven out here at the front. Naan bread and tea, it says there. So there, it, oh, you can't really see very much because of the way the sun is. So let's get a little bit closer. All right, there we are. So there is the uh, restaurant. And they have some pictures of their food here at the front. I think Joel was here just a few days ago, at most a week or two. So with me showing up with my GoPro, uh, Joel also shoots video with a GoPro. If they uh, see me coming in with my GoPro, they must think there's some sort of an invasion of uh, GoPro people. But yeah, here are some of the dishes of uh, lamb masala, beef nahari, chicken korma, and all kinds of masalas and bindi. I think Joel ordered bindi. He was very excited about uh, that. Chicken tikka, chicken tikka leg. Biryani, biryani, mutton. So there's some of the uh, food on offer. Let's go inside and uh, see what happens. Okay, there's nobody here. 
and the lights are off and the fans are off. So there were some people here. There were two women uh, in the back and uh, they didn't seem overjoyed to see me come in as a customer, but uh, they seem kind of puzzled as to why I would be here. Maybe I'm just here at the wrong time. As I said, I have a, I have a profound ability to go everywhere at the exact wrong time. So maybe Joel was here more in the evening when there's just a bit more activity. Anyway, they did um, kind of stare at me for a few seconds and then they came out and uh, turned on the lights. So I have some of these menu cards that he was talking about. They weren't arranged on a table. So there, for example, is um, chicken tikka masala. What's that one? Kima karat. Well, the ordering is not going quite as smoothly as I'd hoped. I was hoping to avoid any kind of uh, language uh, barrier. I think Joel could skate through all of this because he speaks Thai. He's made a point of studying Thai and learning it. So, and he has an overwhelmingly friendly personality. So I think he just draws out the uh, best of people. I tend to come in feeling kind of hesitant and awkward. Like right from the beginning, it was dark here and I feel like as a customer, I'm disturbing them. So I feel really hesitant and, and, and yeah, so I just, I just bring my own awkwardness with me wherever I go, apparently. But these uh, menu cards also don't have prices on them. And so there's no clear indication of how big the dish is or whether it's meant for one person or a big group of people. And all of the things that they sell aren't really here on the cards. So you still have to um, be able to communicate verbally to get your order across. But I spotted something that looks interesting. I don't know what it is. And this is it here. It's called Sarsan Ka Sag. And it looks like spinach, some kind of spinach thing. I'm gonna give that a try, see if uh, they can make that. And from the other cards, I think I might go for chicken tikka masala. Again, I don't know how large a portion I'll end up with. And since I'm feeling hungry, I might throw in a dal as well and uh, perhaps get some chapatis to go with this. And I'm sure this selection of food is like not a good assortment, but <laughs> it is what I, am, I seem to be ending up with. Because I don't really know what any of these other ones are. Kima, karat, chicken butter, chicken korma, chicken, a lot of chicken. And then the bindi that uh, Joe likes. So we'll see if I can order this with some uh, chapati and see how it goes. Okay, things are going along swimmingly. I placed my order and uh, nothing I ordered seemed to cause any concern for them. That's another weird thing about me and restaurants because I guess I don't have a lot of self-esteem in restaurants or something because when I go in, it's, it's not really about me getting the food I want. I sort of want to order the food that makes life easiest for them. I go into these restaurants that have these vast menus and I just can't imagine how they can make everything on the menu. And I think I will just pick out items and then I'll tell the waiter, okay, I'd like this. And then he'll heave this internal sigh. He's like, ah, of course you ordered that. The most difficult thing to make on the menu. <laughs> because that's just what I would do. I have, the, I have these talents. So I kind of want to order the food that makes sense here that people would order naturally for lunch and would not cause any problems for anyone. So even when I brought my three giant uh, laminated playing cards to the women at the uh, counter, I kind of handed them over hesitantly. And I always ask, 
is this okay? I mean, is, is this all right, my order? You know, you can tell me if, you know, chicken masala is a difficult thing to prepare at two in the afternoon and they would prefer it if I would order something else. But I kind of approached them kind of bent over and humbly apologizing for my order in advance. But I did get a, uh, a nice smile from the woman behind her mask, you know, but I could tell she was smiling. And then uh, she won me over because when I sat down, they brought over a glass of ice filled to the brim. And now I can uh, get ice water to go along with my meal. So bring me ice and all is forgiven. And I'm, I'm suddenly the happiest man around. Well, there's my ice and there's a bottle of water already sitting on uh, every table. Nam thip water. Let that get uh, nice and cold. It kind of makes sense, the things that I think about and the things I end up thinking about. Like someone like Joel, he's obviously very interested in food. And he comes in here wanting to know all about the food and talks a lot about the food. And I'm here, of course, because I like Indian food and I'm hungry and I do like good food. But as soon as I come into a place like this, I don't, I don't think about the food so much as I guess I'm more about systems and logic. I always look for systems wherever I go. If I were the owner of a restaurant, for example, what kind of systems would I put in place for the customers to order? And I usually end up in trouble overseas because Restaurants tend to cater to people who already know everything. They know what food is served here and they don't really need a menu. They would just come in and sit down and start ordering and they know what they would have and what they would make. I think these pictures in the window would be largely ignored by their regular customers. So someone like me coming in, I need a guide, you know, I need a map, I need a menu that lays everything out and they, they just don't have that here. They have, you know, those dishes in the, uh, in the window. And when Joel showed those pictures in the window, I also got excited. It's like, wow, I, I can just point at those pictures. But it doesn't really work out because the pictures are on the outside of the window. So in order for me to use those pictures to place my order, I would have to ask the woman to go outside with me. You know, come leave your restaurant. Let's go out on the sidewalk so I can point at pictures on your window. And that's what I wanted to do, in fact, but I, I felt awkward doing that. I didn't want to cause trouble. So I just ordered from the cards that were sitting on the uh, table. And I'm sure they have tons more dishes than are in those cards, but again, without any system in place for someone like me to figure all that out. I just, I just follow the easy path and, and I order what I see on the cards and I'm sure it'll be delicious. Food has started to arrive and everything seems to be coming together well. Uh, the last dish. So everything is here now. And they're really nice uh, single serving portions, I think. So at least I did not order a banquet for 10 people as I uh, worried I was doing. So we've got the dal over here and chicken masala. And then whatever this is, some kind of uh, spinach or a vegetable. And then uh, chapatis. I'm wishing I'd ordered some rice as well, but I think this will be enough uh, on its own. Time to tuck into my lunch. Yeah, I am kind of missing rice. I feel like there should be rice on this plate, but... Um, uh, chapati. Wow, okay, those are big, serious uh, chapatis. I ordered uh, three of them. Probably don't need three. Try some of the uh, chicken. Mmm, nice. <clears throat> I 
has some spice going. You're definitely getting your value in terms of um, spiciness. Um, it's really good. And the chicken is very tender. As you can see, I'm cutting through it with a spoon. So. Mm. Okay. Let's try this uh, mystery, mystery dish here. Hmm. It's going to remain a mystery for now until I can look up the name of it online. Um, I'm assuming spinach or something like that. It has a kind of a, a flavor that hits you in your nasal passages, almost like a minty something going on that kind of goes up into your nose. That's very nice. That is a nice flavor. And the doll. Hmm. It's also very good. Something different about the um, flavor. Something there I wasn't expecting. Help me, Joel. Help me describe the food. I don't know what I'm doing. All I know is it, uh, yeah, it tastes very good. So really, I think that is all there is to say for now. I've got my uh, chicken masala, some kind of mystery spinach thing, dal and uh, chapatis. I'm gonna settle in and enjoy my lunch, get out my book and read for a while while I enjoy this uh, little feast. I'm finished with my lunch and I just thought I'd take another look at the menu out here and take a second look at what I had. So I had this, the chicken tikka masala for uh, 90 baht. And I believe I had the dal tadka for 50 baht. And then the mystery meal was this one here, sarsan ka sag for uh, 70. And then I had three chapatis plus a bottle of water. I didn't do the math in my head just now, but the, the bill that I was presented with came to 265 baht, and that's around 850 US. It's quite a bit more than I would normally spend for a lunch. I would classify that as a special occasion, special treat kind of lunch, but mm, it's definitely good. Um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of flavor in every in every dish that's for sure there's one funny moment because i was still struggling with this feeling of awkwardness that was in the air this awkwardness that i brought into the restaurant with me and i'm just trying to break the ice i guess trying to establish some kind of a uh, human connection with the people there and i happened to have joel bruner's video queued up on my phone and I assumed they would remember him. So I got up from my table before the food came and I went over to the, the server, the woman who had taken my order, and I showed her Joel's video on YouTube. And I, she's like, ah, do you remember him? Do you remember Joel? And she remembered him instantly, of course. <clears throat> it's not often they get a, a foreigner in the restaurant with a GoPro let alone two of them in a short amount of time. But the funny thing is, and I run into this all the time, is that because of the language barrier, on both sides, we're constantly trying to guess what the other person is talking about. So I'm showing her this picture of Joel, and what I'm trying to do is explain to her how I found, how I ended up in her restaurant. Like, hey, you know this guy, Joel? I just saw his video. I said he was a friend of mine, though I, I don't actually know Joel, but I said, hey, he's a, my friend, and he 
because of his video, I came to your restaurant and I'm trying to establish this friendly connection with the woman. But of course, she doesn't understand what I'm saying and she's staring at me, trying to figure out, like, why is he showing me this video? Why is he showing me this picture of Joel? And this particular picture of Joel was of him outside the restaurant standing by that oven where they make roti, where they, you know, they bake the bread inside this clay oven. And I guess that's kind of a, a thing that only happens at, after five o'clock at night. And when Joel was there, he wanted to have that. He made a big deal about going out there, watching how it's made and talking to the guy who makes it. And they had to explain to him, it's not ready yet. He eventually did get some, but this whole, Joel made a big point about getting some of this and enjoying it, talking about how it's made, all this kind of thing. So when I showed the woman a picture of Joel out by the oven, she assumed that I wanted roti also. So as soon as I showed her the picture, she was explaining, no, 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 you know, we, we don't have any roti. Um, only after five o'clock, you have to come back. And she was very apologetic because she could not provide the dish that she thought I was asking for. <laughs> but I wasn't doing that at all. I was showing her a picture just to sort of establish this uh, friendly tone, right? So we often, I often run into these situations. It often takes place inside stores where I might be shopping and I'm looking at some kind of object I'm thinking about buying. And I might have a question about the object. More often, I'm trying to establish this friendly rapport with the store clerk. I wanna talk about the object. I just want to have a discussion about the features of it, uh, compare it to similar uh, products. You know, just have a, a small talk about this product. And that's what I'm trying to do. But the clerk staring at me, he always assumes I'm asking about the price every single time. So no matter what I say, if I say anything about the product or ask a question, they always come back with the price. Oh, this is how much it is. I'm like, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not, I don't care about the price. I'm not asking about the price. I'm just saying that, wow, isn't, doesn't this phone have a beautiful screen? It's so big. And he says, oh, the price is, and he says, oh, maybe I can get you a discount. Like that's, he thinks I'm asking about the price. So like, no matter what I say, he's trying to figure out what I'm asking. And he just automatically assumes I'm asking about the price. So there's this sort of a, two people staring at each other and just trying to guess what the other person is trying to talk about. And we are usually both of us completely wrong. So I thought that was kind of funny. Hey, see this guy, Joel, he's my friend. He told me about your restaurant and her reply is, oh, you can't have roti, I'm very sorry. You know, so we are completely misunderstanding uh, each other. And that is it for today's lunch, today's lunch video. I hope you enjoyed some of that. I certainly did. Mm. But I think if I go back there, it will have to be on another sort of special occasion day when I feel like I need a, a meal that nice, you know, with that many flavors coming at me all at once. It's not an everyday uh, event for me.
help me, Joel, help me describe the food. I don't know what I'm doing. All I know is it, uh, yeah, tastes very good.